Hey everybody and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. My name is Kirsty and I am coming to you from a heatwave. <laughs> um, I'm coming to you from Paisley in Scotland. I used to live further down the coast but I have moved closer to Glasgow. So right off the bat, this might be coming off a wee bit soon because it is warm here on the west coast. Uh, personally, I prefer the cold weather. I wouldn't necessarily say winter, but I definitely prefer the colder weather. Uh, I like being able to layer up rather than essentially taking a ton of layers off. And uh, I was going to bring the fan in and I do have like my wee mini fan here, but I don't know how loud it's going to be on the camera, so I haven't put it on. So at some point I may put it on and like have it down where you can't see it and hopefully won't hear it. But at the same point I really don't want to have the noise constantly in the background because that could annoy some people. So at some point this may have to come off and I tend to wear like sports bras so it's a really thick strap compared to my t-shirt strap. And I know more people have a pet peeve about that than about the noise of a fan so I'm trying to win on both accounts here. <laughs> Uh, and don't worry about the hand, this is just a compression glove. I've been having a lot of issues with my hands and my wrists recently um, and this seems to help. So, a couple of finished objects, two whips, some hand spun yarn and some acquisitions. But we'll talk about that because I know after last episode I said I wasn't going to be buying anything. So hopefully this will be a nice short podcast for y'all and you don't have to sit and watch for ages and ages and ages. Uh, but um, I am working on, I feel like I'm sweating, I'm going to have to take this off. Blah, there goes my hair. Oh, talking of, do you like my hair? <laughs> Uh, I didn't actually talk about it in the last video I put up, my Tour de Fleece prep video. Uh, I got roughly between 7 and 9 inches taken off because it's a bob so it kind of, I obviously got more length taken off the back than I did at the front. But yeah, about 7 to 9 inches got taken off and wasn't quite what I was going after. Like the, the lassie I went to go see, bless her, she was brilliant but she was intimidated I don't want to say scared intimidated is probably the better word she was really really intimidated because I went in and she was I was like right is there any styles you want to do because I have no preference and that threw her off straight away and I didn't mean to throw her off but I was just like is there anything like in your head that you really want to try because I don't really care what you do with my hair so that threw her right off and she was just like, uh, 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 but it's your hair, you decide. And I was like, yeah, but if there's a style you really want to try and you haven't found a client that wants it, just do it. I don't care. So eventually she's like, what do you have in mind? And it was a lot shorter than what I've got. And I think that really, really intimidated her. So I went with the middle ground because she wanted to do a bob. So we have a bob. I feel that it's worked really really well, uh, especially because I do have a natural wave in my hair. It looks a mess just now, but that's because it's really freaking humid here. <sighs> but yeah, not quite the length I was after, but I do like it. I'm trying to stay severely hydrated in this weather because as a natural ginger, this weather is not good for me. I have to like completely douse myself in um, sun lotion and I'm just constantly drinking. Well, that's diluting just not water. It's the same thing. And I keep looking outside because the forecast is promising me rain and a thunderstorm at some point this weekend. So we can only hope. <laughs> anyway, let's do some finished objects. Um, don't think you guys have seen these. I'm trying to think, yeah I don't think you've seen these because I worked on some of these right before I got my hair cut 
Um, and that was before, after the last episode. So I've got a good couple of more scrubbies. These are the Sakura pattern, which is right here. Sakura face scrubbies. This was a free pattern I found, and I found it through a. You know, I said Patreon, but that's not right. Through Pinterest. So this is Sakura face scrubbies, and it's by. Can't really read it on the front page. It's some white white handwriting or white writing. Came Crafts K A M E. Or Came Crochet K A M E again. Uh, I find it a really good pattern. It's really kind of intuitive. Like once you know it, you don't really need to look back at it. And it's got like these really good ridges. So these are really good for face scrubbies in particular because. They're going to really exfoliate your skin. But also, I would use these in the shower to exfoliate. So I have... I got eight. I got these done about three weeks ago, just after the last podcast. Um, haven't decided if they're going to go to anyone in particular or whether we're just going to keep them in our cupboard and use them as and when. But... Uh, I'm going to chuck those in my box. Next one, technically I'm counting as a finished object. So I joined, let me pull up the details so I don't get this wrong. This actually, because I can't remember her Instagram handle. Oh, I was hoping it would come up. Maybe I need to check. Facebook. I'm part of the Facebook group. Yeah, here we go. Apologies if you can hear Scott. Like, he's sitting in the room downstairs and he's on clearly on the phone. Um, and he's very, very loud. His voice carries, like, he doesn't realise it. So I'm doing the Square a Day Challenge. And this is being hosted by Hooked on Crochet Club. Uh, or, yeah, Hooked on Crochet Club. And I have her name in my emails. I thought I did. Shona. Uh, I think that's how you say her name. I'm not good with that spelling. But yeah, I think it's shown out of the Hooked on Crochet Club and she's hosting the Square a Day Challenge. And it is a crochet challenge. And it's basically to help you get into a rhythm and get um, to start working on a, a daily habit. And I thought this would be really, really good without the pressure of thinking of it as a blanket. Teresa, please don't kill me. <laughs> I know, I know. You said I'm not allowed to start another blanket project. Technically, I'm not. I'm just doing something a day that ends up as a blanket. I'm trying to justify it for myself. Um, so even though it's called Square Day, I've decided to go with a hexagon because I've not done a hexagon before. And I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So I have a blanket pack that I got out of our supermarket Aldi and it's got a whole range of colours and I really really liked it and I thought you know what that colour palette would be really really good for when Scott and I go out get our house. So I decided to try it so it is day two of the challenge today is the 2nd of July and I haven't sat down to do my second one so that's going to be after this because this is I've decided to record on a bit of a whim. So I got that done. So technically that's a finished object. And then depending on how strict you are with claiming something as a finished object, I do have a cardigan. So this is the Miet cardigan by Andy Satterland. And technically this should not be able to fit me. 
the pattern is not size inclusive at all. Like it's got three sizes and I think the biggest size is a 42. Yep, a 42 inch bust. And that's to actually have two inches negative ease. So really, like that's not much at all. So you've got a 34, 38 and a 42. And, but I really, really wanted to knit it. Like it's been in my queue forever. It's been something I've just wanted to make for years. And I, just, <clears throat> I decided that I was just going to do it. I was going to cast it on. I was going to try and get it finished. And if it didn't fit me, it was not the end of the world. I could give it to my Bessie. And I know she would really appreciate it. So I cast it on. I started whizzing through it. And then when I got to the separation of the sleeves, I was like, I'm so used to casting on, I'd say in the range between 6 and 12 stitches under the arm, um, once you split for the arm. And this one had you only cast on 2 stitches, and I thought that was really, really bizarre. So I actually cast on 10 stitches. Um, now if I had really kind of sat down and looked at the pattern, and worked out something that I probably think, I think I only should have cast on 8 stitches, but oh well. I cast on 10, and then I kept trying it on, and given the fact it is meant to have negative ease, when I tried it on and kind of pulled it like it would if it was blocked, and then taken into account negative ease, it does actually fit. Like, I'm genuinely surprised. Oh, that's hard to put on with a compression glove. So it does actually fit. The thing is, I made it in Knit Picks Will of the Andes. And it turns out, this is a bit prickly for me. It's fine in the hand. It was absolutely fine to work with. I actually quite enjoyed making it and knitting with it. But what doesn't help is I have eczema on my upper back. But even just having this on now, I'm feeling it here on the top of my back, which is where I would expect to feel it. Uh, here. I'm really feeling it here. Like I'm actually feeling like like um heat rash. That's what it kind of feels like to me. And I'm just hoping, because I had my best friend try it on, knowing it would be too big for her. And I was just like, what do you think? She's like, oh, that's lovely. And I was just like, is it prickly? Is it is it scratchy? And she's like, oh, now that you mention it, yeah, actually. And she couldn't take it off quick enough. So, <laughs> not going to give it to her, obviously. And I don't know anyone else that would want it, that it would also fit. So, I'm hoping that if I just put it in a kind of soak with some conditioner and then block it, because I've yet to actually block it, that it's going to be okay because the more I wear it the less I notice the prickle like even now I just feel warm but that's because you know it's well actually no I really feel it in my neck now I'm going to take off oh. um I really feel it on my neck there which is where my eczema is at its worst um so yeah, I'm hoping with a good block and a wee bit of conditioner, it might soften up the yarn a bit. And I know sometimes when you wash it more, the softer it gets and all that jazz. So I'm really pleased that I've done it. And I've taken a note of how I've made it fit me. Uh, but I've actually asked my best friend if she would want one. And when she was last here, we kind of went through some of my yarn and I was just like, right, out of these colours, what would you prefer? So she's picked it out and I've got the ball of yarn sitting downstairs and it's literally, oh, I don't think I should, put that, should have put that jumper on now. Um, so it's literally just a case of trying to get some things off the, off the wheel, trying to get some projects off the needles. And probably just wait until Tour de Fleece is over, to be perfectly honest, and then casting the jumper on fodder.
So that is the Miet cardigan. I'm very happy with it. Just wish I didn't feel as sensitive to the yarn as I do. Okay, whips. You technically saw one of these last time I podcasted, and believe it or not, it's not this one. So this may be a finished sock, but you actually saw this one last. <laughs> Uh, these are from my best friend and again the night she was down she tried on the Miette cardigan I had to try on the sock because I decided to do her socks a little bit differently to see what she prefers. So as I mentioned last time I've done a rounded toe and I had done the fish lips kiss heel. And I had to try it on and it was just a little bit short for the heel so uh, I had the second one on the go and was ready to put the heel in at the same point as the first one and that's when she's like no it, it's a wee bit too short so I extended the length of this one and got that finished and then today I've only ripped out the first one and I've got it to the point now where I will put the heel in correctly at the correct length so I hope to have these finished really really soon um, this is the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn and I I didn't know what one it was then and I don't know what one it is now but the numbers on the ball band are 06 851 I'm sure it's one of the birds I don't think it's mallard I'm not entirely sure but yep so slightly different way around this is the second sock that's finished and the first sock is no longer finished but it will be soon enough and then my next work in progress is a biggie okay right let's do this without having things fall off the needles because I think I've got like two different sections on scrap sections that made no sense okay so this <laughs> this hunk of stuff is my marled magic sweater by Stephen West this is a pattern that my friend Amy and I decided that we were going to work on um not really as a cow but we were just going to work on it and try and like in, inspire and motivate each other to keep going with it and we started it on the first of January this year and when I moved, when Scott and I got this place and we moved and stuff, this got put down for a long, long time. And then it just stayed being put down. Um, and I've picked it back up and I'm on to the second side. That was not very elegantly done. So this is how it's gonna start looking. So there's a lot of colour in this just now and if I remember correctly I'm on section 10 possibly but I'm loving it I think it's going to be so awesome I think it's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable because of all the different colours and that actually brings me joy don't ask why I like being the odd one out I like being the weirdo and I think there's a lot of colour in this that would make people be a bit like, why did she pick that? Like, why, why are those colours together? So, like, I love this section here. Like, I absolutely love this colour. This is Cookston Crafts. I'm currently loving the start of this one, but this one is going to be marled with all my other colours. And then my other favourite section is actually these two. So this is a yarn that the... I was going to... I was going to say that and it's, it's going to sound really wrong, but like a weird order of how to say it but this was bought um gifted to me by my friend Eva who is the director of Perth Festival Festival of Yarn I said that way too quickly uh so that was a amazing gift and I actually used most of it up in this one section alone which really bums me out because I only have probably about seven grams left maybe less so I'm hoping I might be able to get a bit more of it in this section that I'm working on now which would be really interesting because they're both um, the seed stitch sections. I did get it in a wee bit 
in the very first mesh section. Uh, is it what I held double with or what? Like, oh, I'm not sure. But yeah, it was mostly all in this one section, which is a shame because I think it's such a beautiful colour. It's such a nice neutral. But yeah, I just love how much colour is in this. It makes me genuinely really, really happy. And it's so soft and it's so squishy because it's, it's two yarns, two strands of yarn held together at all times. This is uh, one of the brio sections. I love this. Oh, I'm just, I'm genuinely so glad I picked it back up. But at the same point, it's taking forever. <laughs> Nothing is fast enough right now for me. Okay, so that is the works in, the whips in progress, the works in progress finished. I'm going to show you some of my spinning. So it is tour de fleece. If you watched my previous video, thank you. I know it wasn't for everybody. Not everyone's a spinner. But before tour de fleece started, I had to get a project off my spinning wheel, which was this one. Is it going to focus? So this is um, hand spun that I done from a braid of fibre that my friend Rosie gifted to me as part of our yarn advent, fibre advent, let's just call it crafty advent. And I can't remember what she called it, I can't remember what the fibre content is. But she's like, if you spin it a certain way, it's going to work up into a self striping. So I spun it all as a single onto one bobbin and then I chain plied it. And that was how you would get your self striping. It still needs a soak and it still needs a thwack, which is, excuse me, when you hit it to help set the twist. So this is mostly what I wanted to achieve which was a four ply but there's some bits where it's just a little bit thicker and it could could kind of go up to maybe like a sport weight but then there's also ones that are really really thin that could actually maybe be classed as light fingering almost lace weight so it's a bit of everything but I love it I think it's really really beautiful and this this will be socks because it was a I'm sure it was a merino nylon, and it's got cat hair on it. This took me a long time to spin. I started spinning this quite a while ago, and then it just sat on my wheel because I became I went through the phase where I wasn't crafting at all, and then I went through the phase where I couldn't stop knitting. So my spinning just went to the wayside. So that's what this is, and then tour de fleece started. And uh, if you've watched that, you'll see what I was hoping to start working on as part of my spin. And I decided that I had to start with the undercover otter because the colours, like, oh my goodness, the colours. I'm so happy with this one. Like, I'm so, so over the moon with this. How stinking beautiful is that? Like, look at those colours. So this is the same as the last one in the sense that I have chain plied this one. So I spun the full 100 gram braid of fibre. Sorry, I'm trying to see who, like, I'm trying to figure out what he's talking about and who he's talking to. But this, I spun all the singles onto one bobbin and then I chain plied them. And this is from Undercover Otter, who's based in Amsterdam. And this was 70% Superwash Mino, 30% Nylon. And the colorway, do we call fiber colorways? Uh, was spring. And I'm just over the moon with this spin. Again, still needs soaked, still needs a swack. But I reckon this is going to be socks as well. I am just really, really happy with this spin. Although, most of it might come out as a DK. 
There's some again that's quite thin, and then there's some that definitely is a DK. Oh well. Okay, so I said that there had been a couple of purchases. I took um, Maddie Harvey's class on knitted necklaces, and in that you use kind of like a ribbon yarn for the start of your necklace. So I bought some ribbon yarn in three different colours. Yes, that green really is that colour. <laughs> I got burgundy, this weird ass green, and black. The green did not look like that on the website. So I got some ribbon yarn. I hope to start making some more necklaces. Although I do need to get the fastenings. And, oh, I've got four minutes left on this segment. Right, I might have to restart and then do a wee bit longer. And even though I said I wasn't going to buy anything, I couldn't help myself because it's, I find it really laughing yaffle was a diary, does not have very many updates. They're very, very sporadic and I love her stuff. She does self-striping yarn. And she happened to be doing an update not long after I said I wasn't going to wasn't going to buy any more yarn and stuff so wasn't wasn't fantastic for my bank balance but I only got two I only treated myself to two and that was it I was a lot more restrained than I could have been uh, so this one is Deja Vu I'm pretty sure this is the six striper I could just count the colours no there's more than six in there um and this one is Summertime. I just love her stuff. I've used her stuff before. I have one or two balls in my stash. And yeah, I just love her stuff. So yeah, two minutes left. Um, talked about my hair. Uh, Scott has officially left his job. He starts a new job on the 13th. Uh, his last job was causing a lot of mental health problems. And because of that, he was off work for quite a while. And um, he was no longer getting paid by them. That's how long he'd been off. Well, he'd been off sick throughout the year for other things. But then he was off past their preferred amount of time off, which is ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, that's why we were kind of watching the pennies. But he starts a new job and he's so looking forward to it. And I'm so looking forward to it starting. And I just hope it's what he needs for my job. Um, that's a whole other story along the lines of like... You are made to pick a vacation very early on in your life. And I don't agree with that because even as a 32 year old, I still don't know what I want to do as a job. I'm just content in my job. So it's the same situation for Scott that he doesn't know what he wants to do. He just knows he doesn't want call centers anymore. So he is moving completely away from call center work, which is the best thing for him. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, my phone's buzzing. <laughs> my my mum just messaged to say her cat Monty is terrified of the seagulls. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because he thinks he's like this big, big, brave cat and he's actually terrified of everything. Um, Scott and I are going to Sulcoats on Tuesday. Or we're at least going down the coast. So you might see a bit of a vlog from that. So look out for that if that happens. But otherwise, I'm going to dash off with 45 seconds to spare. I'm going to go downstairs and knit and enjoy an evening with Scott. We're going to, he's going to play Xbox. I'm going to watch. And yeah, thank you for watching. I put out a short episode for once. <laughs> anyway, stay safe. Look out for a vlog coming next week. And then I'm also going to be, I also am vlogging part of a, the Tour de, Front, Tour de Fleece. Uh, so look out for that as well if that interests you. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all stay safe and keep knitting, keep crafting, whatever it is. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye!